Revelation. This is the role you have to play in making this year become for you in reality the year of marvelous light. Number one, you must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge. I wrote it down here. You must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge. Knowledge would not just come and meet you. You have to pursue with passion. Don't forbear with ignorance this year. Make up your mind. I'm tired of this generational ignorance. I'm tired of this limitation, absence of light. And you pursue it diligently. And the Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, everyone that asketh receiveth everyone that seeketh findeth and to him that knocks he says the door shall be open say amen. amen so you must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge number two i wrote down here that you must be teachable you must be meek james 1 21 if it will be your year of marvelous light then you must be teachable wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul say meekness can i tell you this meekness is a posture you put yourself in a position where you are passionate about knowing what you do not know and when you find an opportunity to know it you drop away a mentality we call in this side of africa called an i too know mentality those who believe they know everything are the ones who don't know anything you easily know those who know by their passion to know more are we together now what will the word of god be doing in the temple the word of god yet at age 12 he was in the temple learning under people he would one day save are we together now Listen, you must cultivate passion for knowledge. Don't come to church. Don't come to the house of God this year hoping to learn one thing or the other. No, no. You must come intentional, ready to receive, ready to damage every level of ignorance that you find. Don't forbear with ignorance. Don't forbear with darkness. Have the meekness to learn number three this is very important you must be determined to see the light of god manifest in every area of darkness in your life you must be determined to see the light of god manifest in every area of darkness in your life that means it is your responsibility under god to list the several areas of your life where you desire to see the light and the power of God and begin to probe them one by one. The Bible says there was this man called Naaman. He was a mighty man, a captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a valiant man in war, but he was leprous. Are we together now? Yes. This is the year where when God shows you mercy in an area, you pat your back in that area, but you turn and begin to say, Lord, thank you for these areas, but here, here, here. And you stay with God until your joy is complete. Somebody say, my joy must be complete this year. One more time. Say, my joy must be complete. You can choose whatever year, but the word is for this year so if you if you want it before you see jesus someday save johnny your faith can take you there but there are people who are insisting that this year this year are we to you must be determined can i tell you this engage the word in every area of your life every area number four very quickly you must be committed to the gathering of the saints like never before 
this is one demand you must be committed to the gathering of the saints like never before very popular scripture psalm 73 and verse 17 psalm 73 and verse 17 let's hurry up until i went into the sanctuary of god then understood i that level of understanding only happened when i went into the sanctuary of god there is a level of understanding that cannot happen to you just in your private quiet time your place there there is a level of light and illumination that happens when we come together as a family of faith are we learning now you must discipline yourself this year and fight any kind of spiritual laziness and laxity i was glad not i dragged myself i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord hallelujah it is very very important you must be committed you must be committed to the gathering of the saints number five this looks like a simple one but it is one of the major keys major keys as far as walking in the reality of marvelous light is concerned you must be committed to speaking the word of god all through this year now light shines in this kingdom when we command it to second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6 light does not just shine it says for god who commanded the light to do what so how does light shine for you you command it to shine that's how god come he didn't say god who wanted light to shine god when it has to do with shining you don't wish shining you command shining for god who commanded the light to shine God who commanded the light to shine. God who commanded the light to shine. Light be. Light be. God who commanded the light to shine. Light be. This is the year when creation must hear your voice. Listen, this is not the year to be silent. This is not the year. Pray for me. Pray for me, apostle. I will pray for you, but you must get up and say in the name of Jesus. January, hear the word of the Lord. I command light. You change that light to anything light can give. God, who commanded light to shine. I love scripture. He would have just said, God had shined in their heart. But he said, God, this man who commands light to shine. So if your light is not shining, could it be that the light is waiting for an instruction? Waiting for an instruction. In the name of Jesus, my tomorrow I speak to you. You can prepare a triumphant entry for your destiny. And while you are saying it, let me tell you this. Satan is the master of the flesh realm. He will say, did you not speak like this in 2021? What happened? Master, we have toiled all night, remember? He said, nevertheless. Next time the voice of doubt comes, say, nevertheless. 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 Shabaruka Toska Debata. Nevertheless, in the name of Jesus. Oh, ministry did not rise. Nevertheless, you kept speaking but went down in business. Nevertheless. God who commanded light. Can I tell you this? Truly, I want you to believe this. If you keep quiet, I've taught you this one of the assignments of the spirit of depression is to bring you to a point of silence where your brain keeps wishing for many things that never happen let the redeemed of the Lord say so if Jesus died without speaking that you come back to life he would have been surprised 
Jesus did not just resurrect because the Holy Ghost came to resurrect him. He sent a word into his third day to wait for him there. Don't enter into a day that you have not spoken into. Hear me. The Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. And the Bible already tell you how God makes things. Genesis 1. That means there should not be anything in that day. If the Lord made the day, anything he made in Genesis 1 was good. But the Bible lets us know that Satan also stands at the corridor of every new day. And waits to be able to sow all kinds of things. This is the year to declare. Lord, we hear that there will be sounds of mourning. We hear that there will be sounds of, of lack, economic meltdown and all of that. But in the name of Jesus, I create my reality. The same way there was Egypt and Goshen. I stand by the power of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Don't be too big to speak. Even God spoke. Listen. Listen to me. When you get up in the morning, train yourself to stop this complaining and these lamentations. You get up in the morning and you're already angry. Oh, this day again. You check your text messages. You check your, the news in Nigeria. And they say, just to let you know that <laughs> you know what is going on. Naira has gone down. This one has gone down. And you watch and say, just to let you know and somebody just calls you and says, look, just to let you know I lost my job. You get up under that kind of climate, the spirit of depression, exactly what he's waiting for. But for someone, you lay your hands on your head and say, in the name of Jesus, I have the power to choose, meaning I can reject. And anything that does not line up with the word of God, I reject it. Can I tell you this? When there was famine in Samaria, there were two people who the famine did not affect. One was the king, the other was the prophet. Elisha did not look like he was a hungry person moving around. No, he came to comfort two women who were eating their children. You first have to enjoy salvation to be a savior. Are we together now? You can't help somebody who is suffering when you are like them. So that God will sort your life so that you can now become a blessing to many. When they are saying, oh, there's no rice, there's no this, the market food is gone, all of a sudden they see a kingdom ambassador. You are distributing food as if you are holding a charm on your hand. And people say, come, oh, I, more than the food, what is happening to you? And you tell them I've been exalted. There is something he did to me. Make up your mind that you are going to speak the word of God. Make up your mind. Don't be silent. Believe me. You get up in the morning. Father, thank you for this day. I decree and declare. I am blessed. You are on a journey. Don't just wait. You already know that there are arrows that fly by day. And in our world now, there are arrows that walk by day. They don't even fly. There are wicked people. They are not just holding arrows. They are the arrows themselves. I know a bit about presidential or priority envoys. When, when, when a priority individual is about to pass a road, within a reasonable vicinity around the distance there is there is an intelligent system of of gauging the safety of that place are they not ministering spirits listen don't feel bad that okay if something happened your loved one was kidnapped i want you to grow spiritually make up your mind lord if it will crash i won't enter but if i enter it won't crash yes sir Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I tell you, if Jesus kept quiet over that boat, he would have been surprised what would happen. 
It's a fish that would have swallowed him like Jonah and kept him at the base of it. Jesus did not just stand and say, don't worry, it's all right, I'm here. He said, peace! Be still. When you see storms arising, your children just come, it looks like they're sick. You are hearing an evil report from the place of work that they are going to downsize people because it's 2022. When all that noise is around you, hush them, peace, be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. In the name of Jesus, marvelous light, peace be still. Listen, listen to me. There are many of you who are saying, Apostle, God has told me so many things, but how will the help come? How will I be able to do the things I'm doing? January can become the same as last year's own if you keep quiet. Just because a prophetic word is before you does not mean anything will change. You have to engage it with understanding. Hallelujah. When God gave this word, I took it as a personal word for myself first. Flogged it out with destiny before coming out here. Alas, Katiba Lakosia. Light, light. Lord, this generational poverty that will not let my family go. We want to serve you, but this thing is keeping us, distracting us, and not giving us room to serve you. You want to pray, you just think of money. You want to fast, you are thinking of money. Lord, end this. Grant me rest. And you begin to pray and speak. I don't know what to do, but start by speaking. It is in speaking direction comes. Hallelujah. I came here to charge you. We are going to pray. Can I tell you this? There is more than sufficient grace. My dear people, let me admit to you truly. I know many of you have heard many prophetic words about 2022. Don't think those prophetic words are a lie. Most of them are true. However, let me show you something that I have taught you here that the prophecy of scripture sustains a unique ability to veto and redefine the believer's reality. Are we together now? Yes. When you keep quiet, you will be a victim. Most of the men and women of God who speak within the boundary of scripture, I'm not just endorsing everybody, but I'm just saying there are people who are communicating the counsel of God and they are not lying. Some of those people came from the secret place and they are telling you this and that and that. You don't just hear and say, oh, so what do we do? And wait for it to come and happen. No. If I tell you rain is coming, what do you do? You check whether your window is open. You close it. If you must be outside, you get an umbrella. It's unwise to know rain is coming and the rain still beats you. What the, 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 the privileged information was wasted. Can I tell you this? Like never before, one of the things I know Satan wants to do is to disgrace believers and make it look like we have been believing a lie. I'm telling you this. I can tell you this as a man of God. Satan wants to see that believers are weary. Innocent pastors in ministry, no results, nothing happening. Sincere believers who love the Lord, you start a walk and it looks like you are struggling. Nothing is happening. As a mother, as a family person, when you have three or four children come to meet you with school fees, pastor, you have not paid your school fees. And you stand there and almost feel stupid for serving the Lord. How about mysterious illnesses that just eat up finances of families? We're going to take a few minutes to pray this thing into our lives. And please hear me, beloved. Do not be in a hurry to just run around. I want you to stay and pray. This year, from a human standpoint, I know the things I've seen. This year comes with a lot of challenges, peculiar challenges. I can tell you this as a man of God. I have seen it. 
but the Bible says listen carefully the Bible says a thousand shall fall by thy side do you know what it means for 1,000 people to fall by your side and only you standing and 10,000 by your right side he said but none shall hurt you you shall stand and behold the reward of the wicked 